Hello, I'm Dr. Jeanette Raymond, psychologist, psychotherapist, and relationship expert, here with my fourth video on couples' communication issues, the thing that brings most people into my therapy office. So, in this video, I'm going to talk about who the subject of your conversation is. So, when you're talking to your partner, it, it's really, really important whether you talk about someone else or you talk about yourself in relation to other people, including your partner. So let's go back to our couple that we're talking about, Rachel and Byron. And um, Byron always tuned Rachel out, if you remember, because she was either scolding or nagging or you know, um, making him feel that he wasn't, uh, his feelings didn't matter. So another thing that Byron was upset about was that when Rachel spoke to him about their family life or about anything else, she always left herself out. She either spoke about him, uh, their children, her colleagues, her parents, her siblings, uh, his friends that she didn't like, but she never actually spoke about her own feelings, her own experience. And it really annoyed him because he felt that she was not owning the fact that she had these negative experiences about other people, about him, about their life together. But instead of owning them, she would give them to other people and say, well, so-and-so, my mother says, you know, that you're uh, not uh, behaving well in front of our kids. You know, um, your friends are a bad influence on you. Um, our son um, doesn't uh, respond well when you are late getting up in the morning and so on. But she never said, I feel, I think, I want, I need. So this would really, really irritate him and he would just look away, grind his teeth and uh, tune out. And um, then she would get upset that she wasn't being heard, she wasn't being attended to, and she was working really, really hard to try and get through to him. So in my therapy office, what I um, noticed was that when Rachel wanted to get through and address an important issue, um, again, she would look at, at Byron, but he would not be looking at her. And the wall would go up on his part because she would start with you, you, you. My mother said, my sister said, um, the, the teacher said, or whatever. And I started to get her to reflect on what was going on for her at that time. Why she would make herself into a non-person. Because she really had strong feelings and wanted to communicate to her partner. And I kept asking her, and what about you? How do you feel? What do you want? What is the message you're trying to get across? Why is this important to you? And as soon as she started to think about that, what do you think happened to Byron? He automatically turned his head and faced her and he listened because suddenly she became a person. She was talking about her own personal experiences of him, of their children, of her family, of their children's school, playmates, whatever it happened to be about their life together as a couple, about, you know, whatever was troubling her regarding their future, uh, financial situation, and so on. He actually started to take notice of her because she allowed herself to become an actual person, not a mouthpiece for anyone that she was in contact with, not just a cipher between her mother and her husband or her sibling and her partner, or her child and her, um, 
her aunt or whatever it happened to be. So suddenly, people start. Her partner started taking notice of her. Every、uh, sh- her feelings were important. She was being attended to. And what do you think? Have a guess at how she reacted. She got very, very, very anxious. She couldn't deal with the attention. So even though she longed for it and craved for it and wanted it and demanded it and had temper tantrums when she didn't get it, when it actually came, she couldn't handle it because she hadn't developed that sense that she mattered, that her views, her opinions, her experiences, her needs, her wants, her desires, her frustrations—they were the important thing, and that. People would only pay attention to her and see her as a person in her own right if she allowed herself to be that person, rather than a conduit for other people carrying messages here and there and getting frustrated because nobody was listening. Why would they listen? They would get angry because they'd say, "Well, why can't your mother tell me herself?" That's what Byron would say. If she doesn't like the way I'm parenting, why doesn't she tell me herself? If you don't like the way that I speak to the kids, why don't you tell me yourself instead of saying that your mother doesn't like?、It? So this became very anxiety-provoking for Rachel, and I had to work alone with her for quite some time to help her feel okay to be a person in her own right, to help her feel centered. And grounded, and that if she had something to say, she could say it independently to her mother, her father, her sisters, her nieces and nephews, her children, her partner, her colleagues, her friends. That she didn't have to go through a third person, and third persons did not have to go through her to communicate. But it was very disturbing to her because. In her childhood, that's how her family operated, and they still did. They passed messages from one person to another through her. She was the conduit. She was the main pipe. She was the passageway between her mother and father, between her sister and her father, between her father and her mother, and between her mother. And her sisters, and her brothers, and her uncles and aunts. So she grew up being a non-person. The only role she ever played was to pass messages along, and she never developed that sense that it was okay for her to have any feelings. So she then started putting all her feelings onto someone else. Oh, my mother feels. My mother says. My father thinks. Your father thinks. My brother thinks. Your sister thinks. But really, it was her own feelings, but she didn't feel confident enough to own them.、And、once I started working with her on them, and she actually started to say, "I think, I feel, I want, I'm anxious about, I'm a little bit frustrated," she saw the results immediately. Byron would immediately engage with her. Granted, they didn't always agree, but they started to have a dialogue. They started to share their experiences and see where there was room for agreement, where they needed to compromise or renegotiate or include other pe- each other's perspectives, so that they could find a place of common ground and move forward. And it was amazingly freeing for her and for Byron. He said, "Finally, I have a wife, not just a message passer." Now I can communicate directly with her because she's communicating directly with me. I finally have a partner, and Rachel felt the same thing. I finally have a partner who cares about what I think and feel, who's choosing to listen to me, who looks at me, who invites me to communicate. And they started to do this more at home when the kids were in bed. You know, when she came home from work, and they had that little time together as they settled in for the evening, or late at night, planning the next day, the week, you know, figuring out their weekend with their kids and so on. And it was wonderful 
for all of us that Rachel became a person in her own right. So when you communicate with your partner, remember who you're communicating about. It has to be about you because you're the only one who can tell your partner what you think and feel and not what somebody else says you should think or feel or pass messages along and leave yourself out. When you become a conduit for other people and give your feelings over to somebody else and pretend that they're coming from another party, you disown yourself, you make yourself unimportant, you make yourself invisible, and it's going to be your own making. You make yourself a non-partner. So when you get frustrated and upset and you feel like your partner doesn't care about you, you're invisible, you don't matter. That's the reason why, because you're not making yourself an actual person with feelings and thoughts and desires and frustrations and fears and doubts, just like your own partner. So when you can be equal with them, they can be equal with you, and that's when your communication starts being meaningful and purposeful and is goal oriented and can get you places. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your feelings, your thoughts, your experiences. Communicate about you. Let me know what your experiences are and what things you're struggling with and I'll be happy to respond. Bye for now.